Hey everyone, it's Phil and Dan here for Aussie Garage. On today's episode, we're down with fellow YouTuber Shane from Shane's Shed, and we're checking out his Suburban. You go check out his channel. We're gonna put the links below. For now, let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Phil from Aussie Garage here today. Pretty windy day today, so bear with us. But we're here with Shane from Shane's Shed. And now, Shane, you've got this lovely car, mate. So tell us about this car you got. Yeah, so this is a 1989 Chevrolet Suburban. Nice. Yeah. And how long you've had it for? Well, since 2018. Okay. I bought it, late 2018. And was it like pretty much this when you got it? Pretty much exactly the same. The only thing I've really changed is the wheels. Yeah, so originally it had some... Uh, like tall cheese cutter, uh, 16 inch rims. So yeah, pick these up on Facebook Marketplace. And So how did you come across this car when you first started looking for it? Or were you even you looking for it properly? Sort of yes and no. I, I had a LJ Tirana before this, a two door, and I've got four kids. So it was kind of something that wasn't ever gonna be, you know, all that practical with a, as a family car. So, and I've been toying with selling it for quite some time. and. Yeah, I, I seen this and just sort of decided that's it. Let's let's go for it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Where was this one based when you bought it? So this was in Queensland. Seen it on Gumtree. I, I forget how it came up on my list or whatever. And but yeah, just sort of seen it and basically bought it sight unseen. Got it trucked over and yeah. It's always a risk when you're sitting there going, oh, is yeah. it like how you said it's going to be? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when you got it over here, there was no issues with it. Started everything was oh, fine on it. It ran well. The only thing that I had, because living at Tom, in Tom Price at the time, and uh, I ended up doing quite a few trips there and back to Perth with it, because we were moving back. So it had a blockage in the catalytic converter. So it was, well, it's pretty low powered anyway, this big thing, but uh, it was even more low powered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up by chopping that out sort of midway through a trip, and uh, that's about the only thing that's really gone wrong with it. Do you know what the color of the car is? I have no idea. I, I think it's been resprayed at some point, but it's definitely not a colour that is that I can find on the suburban or the square body sort of list of, of, for this year. As being a standard exactly, kind of paint yeah, job, yeah. yeah. Tell us a bit more about the background of the car. Do you know how how many owners this has had, or the background about this vehicle at all? How many owners it's had? I don't know. I do know the last owner who had it. But he had some drag racing cars and stuff, so. He's uh, used it as a tow rig, so okay. it, it's been a bit of a work vehicle. It's obviously been imported and converted to right-hand drive, so had a reasonable job done on it. Yeah, but who's actually done it, I don't know. The whole dash is fiberglass, so a couple of little things don't quite fit up right, like the factory, but uh, overall, eh, it's not too bad. And this is definitely like, it's an import model because we don't have these ones over in no. Australia. I don't think they were ever built in Australia, these kind of models. No, the only, uh, the only square body design uh, was some of the, the C10 utes and I think C20 utes as well, which Holden built as a, a uh, knockdown kit. Okay. Uh, so they come out factory in right hand drive, but uh, yeah, apart from that, we didn't get anything else here. We've got chickens walking past. <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's pop the hood and let's see what's under the bonnet. Yes, I must warn you, it's uh, nothing to look at. Well, nah, it's nothing special. Fair enough. <laughs> let's still look at it anyway. Ooh. So she's a bit of an old girl. It is, yeah. So this is a uh, totally stock standard 454 big block. So <laughs> Nice, okay. Yeah. Now, uh, we know on your channel you do a lot of um, how-to and fix-it kind yeah. of programs and stuff like that. So what kind of stuff have you done on this engine on your channel? Well, the most recent thing, I uh, ripped the starter motor out and uh, gave that a bit of a freshen up because it's been giving me a few problems recently, just not starting. So okay. that's uh, running really nicely now. So uh, this, uh, has, unfortunately, probably hasn't had the most... Uh, the most coverage on my channel at the moment so okay uh, i really need to do some more stuff on this but uh it's just one of those things about time and money and you can't have both of them at the same time yeah that's <laughs> it that's it mate so what's behind the big block at that time the, the transmission and diff on this turbo 400 so it's pretty much all, all the heavy duty towing stuff 
uh, and the rear end's a, a GM 14 bolt. Pretty big unit. <laughs> yeah. Basically small truck stuff. Yeah. yeah, well these are pretty big units anyway, especially the wide body type, um, box body, or I yeah, think they well, call it, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're a derivative of the square body. So the square body basically had like the C10, C20, C30s, which is all the bay trucks and the Blazers yeah. as well. So they're all based on this architecture. So they're basically a truck. These engines, like at sort of that late 80s, it was a pretty crappy time with American V8s. So, you know, they heavy, heavily smogged down and they didn't make much grunt for the size of the engine. So, but it's got reasonable low down torque and Basically, like a, a pretty close to a diesel, really, the way it runs. So, at the moment, like you haven't rebuilt it or anything like that, or uh, hadn't freshened it up. You've just pretty no, much how it was. You got it. It's you how, just how it is. Maintained it's it. Pretty much maintained. I would like to, uh, you know, give it a little bit of a tickle at some point in time. But to be honest, these were they were a low compression engine, so it really would need you know all new pistons, bump the compression up a bit, new cam. Probably yep. definitely new heads, uh, the old peanut port heads on it, they're pretty restrictive and don't flow very well. To be honest, I'm not too stressed about it because it's just an awesome cruiser the way it is now. The future plans, what are you looking at? Uh, obviously, would love to tidy this up a bit, uh, just make it look a bit nicer. Uh, and yeah, probably just that, that little bit of a tickle though. Give it a little bit more horsepower to represent my 454 cubic inches of a yeah, American definitely. V8, you know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Let's go check out the interior. Cool. Too easy. Uh -huh. Okay, wow, this is a, a throwback, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's very 80s. Yeah. <laughs> These, like, everything looks super luxury, like armrests on either side. Yeah, the captain um, chairs for the front, they're, they're awesome way while cruising. Yeah, it's just perfect, and everything's like neat and tidy, even though it's like um, outdated and a bit like that, but it's still classic. Yeah, indeed. It, perfect. Yeah. And um, have you had to do anything in the interior? Uh, well, I do need to fix the air conditioning if you count that as the interior, but uh, okay. it just needs a regas. I, well, I'd say it needs a regas, but it could need more than that. I don't know. I've never had it by operational since I've had it. Seven seater or eight seater? Uh, eight, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you're three at the back, three in the middle, and top and front. The awesome thing as well is even with that third row up, I've still got a massive amount of boot space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you don't, just don't get in. Uh, Pretty much any bay car, no. really. Because how long are Harley's cars anyway, do you know? Five and a half metres long. Wow. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yep. So this would be a pain in the ass parking. Yeah, sometimes. and the, the turning circle is pretty horrendous as well. Yeah, so it's easier to reverse back in than park I reverse, forward? I reverse in mode of parking bays, yeah. What are you thinking about doing to the interior for the future? To be honest, I think it really probably the seats need a bit of a refresh up, especially like this driver's seat's getting a, a little bit worn out. Uh, Basically, just a, a real good tidy up. Like the roof lining's still perfect. Probably new carpet. I uh, wouldn't mind doing a bit of a center console because the the stereo location, with it being converted, is you know it's kind of suboptimal. It would have been okay when it was a left hand drive, you know, sort of in the right position. But for us here, it's it's got a bit out of the way. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, really, the inside doesn't need much. The the third row does annoy me because it's a different color. But at the end of the day. It, it's still functional, so. These things look bloody comfy as to sit on. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. super comfy, like just for cruising. Uh, it's just, it's just luxury in a way. Yeah. 80s luxury, but. That's yeah. it. This as well, having the, the low hump interior is when you're driving, you just sort of stretch your feet out over the other side. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just comfy and it's got cruise control as well, so. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> All factory. And notice you've got the overhead uh, console as well. Yeah. Um, now that's interesting, that's pretty good. It's not like got two storage spaces and, and bloody map lights everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's all factory stuff as well, so. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good when they do stuff like this and you look at it and go, yep, that suits. Yeah, some stuff was well thought out. I mean, like I said, they're kind of based on a truck, but sometimes you wouldn't know about it when you look at it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's go check out the back and the boot area. Yeah, sure. Awesome. All right, guys, don't forget to go check out our website. We've got heaps of new merch on there. Check it out, support our channel. We thank you for it. Drop down this heavy ass tailgate. Definitely, yeah. definitely looks heavy. Yeah. Like, and like you said, yeah, there is plenty of room here. Indeed. Like, even with that third row. So if you took that third row out, like, yeah. Oh, it's huge. I mean, just to give it perspective, you know, like you've got a full size spare tire sitting behind the third row between the tailgate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
I have slept on this tailgate before, and when we were uh, moving from Tom Price, I had, geez, it was, it must have been about 16 removalist boxes in the back with all the seats blow folded up. So Wow, okay. Yep. It, it's canibulous. Plenty of room. <laughs> yeah. It's just like having your own panel van, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's like a panel van, but you can take your whole family with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. And this is all electric um, glass uh, window, everything, yep, isn't yep. it? Yep, yep. So, it's, I can drop it down with the key from the back, or I've got the switch up the front. Let's go around the car and see what else we can find. Cool. The so, rear bumper annoys me. What's that? <laughs> the rear bumper annoys me. Oh, does it? If you it? wanted to chat about that. Yeah, okay. But, Why does that annoy you so much? Uh, just because somebody's butchered it by, obviously, when it was imported with the indicators, because obviously yep. being American, it would have had the, you know, your red uh, flashing brake light for indicators. So, and this, uh, what do you want to call it, step or plastic bumper, kind of seems to be unobtainium anywhere, okay. even from the US. Wow. So it will be replacing, the, and this has all been cut into the bumper as well, so it's been sort of butchered. And, oh yeah, I can so, see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, so it kind of means I'm going to have to go to probably a full chrome bumper, and okay. import one from the States, I, I guess, unless I can find an unlisted one locally, which is pretty slim picking. All right, and um, and then we've got the uh, wheels that yep. you were talking about. Yeah. Now so, these look bloody lovely. Yeah, so these are 20 inch, which I didn't kind of want to go something that big. I actually kind of like a small rim with a bit more sidewall, but uh, being an eight stud, yep. you kind of pick up what you can get when you're looking second hand, I guess. Okay. So unless you go new and import them and all that stuff, I just run with these. The running boards, are oh, perfect, mate. And they make the whole car look a lot lower as well. Like, yeah. To be honest, I'd love to go a bit lower, but the rear is where it's kind of limited. Like, you can't really go any lower without doing chassis mods and stuff. And being a wagon, it's kind of not really practical to do. Okay, so is that the standard grill? <laughs> or? No, that is not. Probably one of those things that's a, like a bit of an early 90s uh, mod that sort of screams out, but the original grill is like a plastic. Uh, these are one of those things, they change nearly every year they release this, uh, this the square bodies, you know. Okay. And the square body's been around since 73 to 87. So pretty much most of those, they had a different grill for every year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I suppose with, the, um, with this, you can actually buy all these kind of square body parts quite easily from the US and bring it over here, couldn't you? You can. Uh, the, probably one of the things that point out, like a lot of people think these headlights are like the 80 series ones, but they're actually smaller. They're a, a weird shape that only a handful of cars ever come out with, even in the States. So yeah, they, they are, are quite small, aren't they? Yeah. And they're running H4s, but they're still bloody very small. Yeah, so these lenses, basically they're a, uh, a left-hand drive configuration, unobtainium now. Uh, well, I think it's about time we're in for a cruise. I think so. I haven't had this out all year, so let's do it. Yeah. Now, these seats are bloody comfy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you just sit in them all day. Yeah, like they're quite um, like they feel quite shallow, but they're bloody really supportive yeah, and comfy. Yeah, indeed. The uh, the rear ones feel really soft and spongy as well, so yeah, they're kind of different to sit in. Yeah. <laughs> And um, you also know uh, another friend of ours, Byron. He yeah. around in the same circles with us. Yeah, we do. So, I, I guess it's the local YouTubers by here. It seems to be a bit of a tight knit group, which is kind of cool. It is. Uh, and I'm kind of just really sort of getting into it and uh, getting to meet a few people. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And it's a good thing about these ongoing projects, you can just tinker out it whenever you need to. Well, that's what I sort of enjoy, you know, just mucking about, doing little bits and pieces here and there. You know, it doesn't have to be strenuous, it doesn't have to be paying, you know, big dollar budget paying builds like pay everyone seems to be doing these days, especially when you look at your YouTube space. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be honest, it's just, I'm just doing what the average person, I, well, I feel like the average person can afford, and yeah, just enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah, great. That's perfect. That, do you have any other project cars that you're doing at the moment? I've recently bought a GQ Patrol. 
Okay, nice. 1989 by same year as this, so... Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's just something I'm slowly building up as a bit of a, sort of family tour, holiday sort of vehicle. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So, the old discovery that I've got, I'm going to be getting rid of that. So, unfortunately, probably the thing that started off my YouTube channel is that uh, I guess that chapter is coming to an end and we're moving into a new one now, so yeah, see nice. how that goes. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Alright Shane, so you pretty much do all your filming for your channel in here. Yeah, it's it's not the hugest space, but uh, I make it work. Yeah, no. that's it. Yeah. Well, have you got everything set up? You've got your workbench and stuff like that yep. uh, on both sides. Um, and you have got all the right equipment, it's just basically it's a smaller space. It is, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of jealous of some of the guys that you get on your channels. We've got way bigger sheds oh, don't worry, all so sorts of cars and <laughs> stuff in there. But, too. Yeah, I just... I think it's just a modest bay shed that I just, like I say, I've got all the stuff that I need to do what I do, and uh, yeah. So tell us a bit more about the channel, about what the kind of stuff you do on there. Yeah, so I've started filming stuff because I've got Land Rover Discovery 3, which I'm getting rid of. So a lot of the content I started with was based around that. So just fixing various pieces, bits and pieces, and, and it's just sort of grown from there, you know, just basically whatever I get to play with and whatever I fix, I'll generally try and film it and basically do some, like some how-to guides and I'd like to be maybe get a bit bigger and maybe go through the more entertainment sort of side but for now I just do yeah. what I can do and but at the end of the day you're getting good feedback from people that are watching your videos and yeah. are thanking you for it yeah. so obviously what you're showing them is definitely helping them out on their vehicles yeah and I guess like somebody my age like you've been around the internet of, fair while you know so a lot of all this sort of stem from uh the use of internet forums and stuff in the early days and now i feel like i've kind of yeah you, know, you, you help each other in that space and now i've kind of morphed into just a different media and and doing things a little bit differently so yeah, yeah. and it's always good when, you, when someone's telling you something but it's better when someone's actually showing you along the steps yeah, of the way and, and like do this or and this may be an issue do that yeah and and that's sort of my approach as well because I've always you know I end up I even myself still you jump on there and you look for a certain job and and not so much on how to do it but just you know what have I got in store how much time am I going to need to do this job and uh, you know maybe what parts do I need to order all that sort of stuff you can get a lot of info from from the YouTube videos yeah definitely and have you got any kind of garage tips that you've been passing on to people along the way uh, I guess it's just Bits and pieces you pick up, uh, tips along the way, and uh, yeah, a lot of it's just sort of been on specific models I've been working on, and uh, but a lot of it is just general mechanical principles. So everything I do, you can apply it to pretty much every model that's out there. You know, you just okay. need to think outside the square. Yeah, perfect. All right, mate. Well, it's bloody lovely seeing your workspace, mate. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Head off. No worries. All right, Shane, it was lovely cruising in this car and lovely talking about um, everything that you've got, your channel, um, everything you're doing on this thing, mate. It's a pleasure. So make sure you jump onto Shane's Shed, like, share, subscribe. Also do it to our channel as well. Perfect. Like this video and uh, we'll catch up with you shortly, mate. No worries. Thanks very much, Phil. Appreciate it, buddy. Oh, it's been a pleasure having you.